And so scientists are celebrating the safe, abundant, clean source of energy. They say it could change the world. How so? Yes, so actually you summed it up quite nicely. Um, but I should say that it's a major scientific breakthrough, but we still have some time before we could actually commercialize it and gain actual energy from this. So what the scientists did is they used uh, the most energetic laser system in the world, which is they, it houses 10 stories uh, building, and they used it in order to bombard a tiny piece of uh, a piece a size piece that contains um, this uh, fuel that will create the, the fusion and all of this energy. And by doing so, they created a small explosion called an implosion that generated a heat and pressure similar to the one found in the center of the sun. And for a, a fraction of a second, it released more energy than the energy put in this uh, system by the lasers. And this is something that uh, that physicists and engineers have tried to do for uh, over seven decades now. And this major breakthrough will actually now allow, will open the door for new scientific breakthroughs, more investigations, and therefore hopefully more uh, rapid development towards uh, cleaner and better uh, energy sources. Uh, but as you said, it will take some time. So this will probably or hopefully uh, be realized by the second half of the century. But until then, we need to invest more effort and uh, energy into the existing uh, energy sources uh, that we currently have. We heard scientists there talking about the ability to put the sun into a bottle. Give us an idea of these next breakthroughs that you alluded to right now. After this, what are the next kind of innovations or breakthroughs we're likely to see following this on this day? Yes, yeah, so actually there are two different ways in order to put the sun in a bottle. One of them uh, is now um, made in several places in the world and the largest one is happening in South France and uh, Hopefully, they will make this in uh, roughly 10 years uh, time. It will uh, be online. And this involves very hot gas called the plasma that needs to collide with such enough high energies and uh, it hits to uh, millions of uh, degrees uh, uh, Fahrenheit or uh, Celsius. In, in this uh, respect, it's not. it doesn't really matter the units that you use. So you need to hit it so much such that they collide and fuse. And what the the, this is one method that most technologies try to achieve. But what uh, the scientists in the National Ignition Facility did is something else. They, they used a, a small um, target and they just bombarded it with a laser such that only for a fraction of a second, you get these high temperatures and high uh, high uh, forces that are, that you find in the center of the sun. And so what they will need to do now is to make much more of these uh, explosions, uh, you may say. Uh, so it would now they could do it only once per day, more or less, and they would need to make many of them every second in order for it to be commercialized. And also they need to make the laser system much, much more efficient. So now... Uh, they get more energy out than the energy invested by the lasers, but they actually need roughly 100 times more energy in order to run the lasers than the energy that eventually get into the igniting fuel. Well, it certainly sounds like a major milestone. Very briefly, though, what are the downsides, if any? Is there a catch here? So uh, I think... The main downside is just whether it will actually work in terms of economically, whether it will be, you could scale it uh, in an economic way and fast enough and uh, things like this. So currently, this is considered to be the holy grail of uh, energy because the fuel that you need to run it is hydrogen, which is found in water. So it's very abundant and it produces no CO2, no radioactive elements. Mm -hmm. It's considered to be very safe. You cannot weaponize it. So this is really the holy grail of uh, energy generation. Um, but time will tell whether it, this uh, technology will actually 
uh, could be achieved. Uh, we certainly so will be watching and we appreciate your explanation. Thank you so much for your insight, Dr. Yuval Rosenberg. Appreciate your time live from Rehovot.